Bonjour, comment allez-vous? Hello, how are you? Welcome back to my YouTube channel and Trencho the Novel. If you have already subscribed to my channel, press the bell icon to get the latest updates. In today's class, we are going to revise something. We are going to revise what? So you all must be knowing that CBSC uh, Term 1, 2020-21, both exams are approaching, right? So today we will be doing a quick revision of the grammar section for term 1 paper. To be noted for term 1 paper only, uh, oh sorry I wrote the date wrong, the year wrong, 2021-22. Okay, so let's begin with revising the grammar section. Like in today's video, we will be covering all the grammar topics in very, very brief, okay? We won't be discussing any question. We will be discussing the concepts, okay? All together and all the concepts which I will discuss in short in this video. You may watch the longer videos, the descriptive videos as well. The links I will be provided in the description box below, okay? So... The first thing for term 1, grammar section, class 10, 2021-22, CBSC paper is what? Tenses. Okay. So in tenses, we have several tenses. First one being present. Present tense simply just conjugate. Right. The present tense conjugation of the verb is present tense. The simple conjugation. Okay. Now one question which may arise here is based on the C clause. Right. I hope you remember that C plus present is either imperative when there is no subject or futur simple when there is a subject. Right. So using that concept you may get present tense. And present tense how you will be uh, answering simply the, the present tense conjugation. Like each verb has its own like ER ending verb has some sort of conjugation. IER having some other. Pronominal having some other. Right. C, R, G, E, R. There are numerous types, right? All these verbs you will get in my, uh, on my YouTube channel. So I should add the link to verbs in French playlist as well. Okay, this would be helpful uh, for doing this uh, present tense. Okay, now most probably in your exam you will be getting mete or to combinable. Now term one paper this year is of objective type. So you will be having three MCQs or four MCQs. And you need to choose which one is the correct one. So you need to look at the conjugation. You need to look at whether the verb is correct or not. Okay. All these things you need to take care of. Second tense being what? Passé composé? No. Yeah. Imperative. Second one is imperative. Imperative is what? Imperative. Imperative is used for what? To give orders. Right. So imperative is generally with Three subjects, tu, nu, and vu, right? And generally when you are writing this imperative statement, you add an exclamation mark at the end, okay? So, uh, what's the general rule to take the tu conjugation and remove the s and then write it here? Then nu, vu is the same as present tense conjugation generally, right? But again, there are some exceptions and those ex exceptions are discussed in my imperative video. Do watch it. The links are in the description box below. Of course, we are not uh, going to go in deep to all these topics because of the time constraint, because the video will become too long if I discuss all the topics uh, in very much detail. Right. So I need to do it quick. Next one. What do we have? Passé composé. Past tense. Generally used for when? A uh, single time event in the past. Okay. How's the formation? We have the subject. Then we have the auxiliary verb. Auxiliary verbs are what? We have two auxiliary verbs. Uh, one is être and the other one is avoir. Now, être. For être, which all verbs are there? All the pronominal verbs and the verbs belonging to the Advent group or Dr. Mrs. Van der Trump. Whichever way you follow. Right. So again, passé composé part one, part two. And all the remaining verbs which are not uh, having et as their auxiliary verb have avoir as their auxiliary verb. Right. 
So you have the present tense conjugation to be noted. Ato or avwa will be conjugated in the present tense. Okay. Now, after that, you have the past participle. Past participle, each verb has its own past participle. There are some exceptions. There are some which could be formed easily. For example, ia ending verb, just remove the i and add the x y and u. Right, like that. Ia ending verb, just remove the r. Right, but there are some excep exceptions as well. All those exceptions are discussed in my past composite video. So, past participle followed by an agreement if applicable. What is this agreement? When a uh, plural subject, then add an s. When feminine plural, add es. When feminine, then add an e. That is known as agreement. Now, when do we need to put agreement? Two situations. First, with at the, it is done always. Okay, with at the, it is done always. And with avwa, also this agreement can come whenever direct object pronoun is there preceding this uh, negative thing. Right, in the statement, if there is direct object pronoun, then also you will be doing the agreement even if the auxiliary verb is what? Avwa. Okay. Next tense we have empathy. Empathy generally used for what? Prolonged action in the past, continuous action in the past, right? For that we use the empathy tense. Empathy tense, how do we use it? We have the subject, then we take the present tense conjugation, right? Present tense conjugation, sorry, yeah, okay. Present tense conjugation, we take it and then we take the present tense conjugation to be specific of first person plural, that is what? No. We take the conjugation of the a verb, of that particular verb, with the subject what? No. Okay. And then we remove the ONS and then we write that stem and then add the empathy endings. Okay. So here I'm writing stem of first person, I hope this is visible, a plural which is no, okay, present tense, added with empathy endings. Now what are empathy endings? Let's quickly revise those. Oh, they are, they are spaced here, but still let me just erase these two. Rather I should erase these as well, because there's a lot to write. Right. Uh, Perfect. Now, je, tu, il, il and I'm writing together. That would save a bit of space. No, vu, il, l. Now you have your stem. Okay, just after stem, you need to add the endings. So for je, it's ais. For tu, it's ais. For il, l, it's ait. For no, it's I-O-N-S, then uh, first the stem and then I-O-N-S, then I-E-Z, the stem and then the stem, A-I-E-N-T. These are your what? Empathy endings. These will be uh, helpful to you in another tense, which is known as present conditional, but it's not in this term, I believe. Yeah, so you may do it in the next term, I think. That may appear. Fine. So these were your what? Empathy endings, and then you add the stem. Stem is what? Uh, the uh, present tense conjugation of the verb with uh, first person plural, which is new. Right. Now we are moving to the next tense. What do we have in line? We have futu plosh. Futu plosh. Hmm. Near future. An event which is going to happen. Indication, don't sank minute. Don't some moment. In a moment. Right. Don't sank minute. In five minutes. Don't. This minute. In ten minutes. These are indicators that you need to use for posh, right? So for posh, how you would form? <clears throat> you need the subject, then you have the, this thing. Yeah, present tense, conjugation of alle, the verb alle, which means to go, and then you have the infinitive form. What is the infinitive form of a verb? What is it? It's the unconjugated form, like alle, A-L-L-E-R, parle, P-A-R-L-E-R, like the full verb, unconjugated one. That is your infinitive, right? So, futu plosh is your near future. Then we have what? We have uh, this. Passé récent, right? Just like near future, we have recent past. 
very simple for say the song uh, indicators ilia ilia sign minute ilia this minute right it's been like that you have the subject then present tense conjugation of venir then you have the now this the will become the apostrophe if the verb after begins with a vowel to be noted and then the infinitive form okay all the tenses which i am discussing here all their links will be provided in the description box below like i am not writing them again and again i will be mentioning all the videos okay individually seventh we have what we have futur long period hmm it's like two events taking place in the future the one taking place earlier is conjugated with what futur long period indicators deka loska ositoka and ko these four are indicators and when the second part or the first part of the statement have these any one of these words and that part is conjugated with futu sample then your indicator is there that you need you are you will get indicated that in the blank you will be putting futu on the real so futu on the real how to conjugate subject we have futu sample form of the auxiliary verb then we have the past participle followed by the agreement if required okay and last in the line we have four tenses we have to do sample hmm. simple future future event right for future event we use it to do sample now it has also its own endings il l <coughs> nu wu il n and it again has most a uh, lot of exceptions generally in future sample for general verbs what is it in take the infinitive form as the stem and then add the future sample endings but there are a lot of exceptions as well so you must go to my future sample video too okay now you have the stem like for uh, are the ending verbs you remove the last e and then add the ending right so there are different different rules for different different verbs all those are discussed in my future sample video so for je it's ai for tu it's as for il it's r for nu it's ons for wu it's ez for il it's ont perfect that's your future sample and with this we have covered eight tenses very quickly and all these eight tenses you will get in the chat uh, not in the chat box sorry uh, in the description box and now it's time to move to the next topic and i feel that i should erase the whole thing because the next topic is kind of weird second one in the line is what pronominative composite pronominative sample i hope you remember it's what ko ki u or do not pronominative what is the work of a pronoun to avoid the repetition by replacing a noun with what a pronoun isn't it so Pronoun relative sample we have discussed long back. Pronoun relative uh, composite is also there in my on my channel. The links will be provided in the description box below. Pronoun relative composite and in your class ten you have pronoun relative composite. Hmm. So pronoun relative composite formed in three ways generally. First with a, then second with the, and then third with any preposition plus like a like a. All these we are discussing now. I am writing here prepositions. Okay. Now, uh, you have masculine singular, masculine plural, feminine singular, feminine plural. Or I should write it like this. That would be better to understand. Feminine singular, masculine plural. That would be better to understand. Why? So with R, we have O U Q U E L for feminine singular. We have R la quel. I hope the spellings are clear in the recording. Uh, L A Q U E L L E, and then there's A with accent grave. Uh, masculine plural, it's O K E L. And feminine plural, it's O K E L. Right? Okay. So for the masculine singular, do K E L. Feminine singular, da la K E L. Uh, masculine plural, uh, de quel, 
and feminine plural take care q u e w l e s one word okay this is also one word the lakel two different words the separate and lakel separate like that preposition hmm first we need to write these lakel 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 and lakel in front of these we will add any preposition for example su or ave or song right like that or pur now what do these mean no first of all let's discuss that when to choose what will appear okay so now choosing between these four will depend on the nature of the subject nature of the noun which you are replacing with this particular pronoun right it will depend on that suppose you are replacing masculine singular noun with a pronoun then masculine singular you have these three options right then you need to see the preposition which preposition will be applicable you need to see the translation of the statement whichever suits the best you will choose that okay now what do these mean these will mean to which if you are using for an object or to whom if you are using for a person or someone the what these four will mean they will mean of which or from which or from whom of whom like that right and uh, prepositions which preposition they will have different different meanings like so lakel on which avec lakel with which ya yeah, with whom uh son lakel without which without whom like that with preposition the meaning will vary of course right so these for your pronunciative composé how to use it in a sentence all those are mentioned in my pronunciative video so you must watch it because the time is running out and we need to move to the next topic see the objective of this video it's just to revise a very quickly all the grammar concepts which you are having in your syllabus in term one paper right of course in this video i am not discussing the exceptions or any extra point as such because of the time constraint to know those you must watch my comprehensive videos on these individual topics right hmm okay time to move to the next topic what do we have the line we have e and o hmm the third topic for today to discuss is e and o the pronouns right now e and o both have different different uses now again they are pronouns pronouns work is what to replace the noun to avoid the repetition of a noun right so need not to repeat it's the it's a pronoun then what the function it does i have told you now when to use these that's the question so e this y pronounced as e is used for inanimate objects okay inanimate objects then we see that by the preposition a okay first case is this uh, for example uh, japon's uh i'm on exam i think about my exam so jipons right uh that's the first use and the second use for place for lieu like in french place is lieu right so for place if that place is preceded by pronoun uh, by prepositions like a she or don sur etc like on in in to at the place right for these if the uh, these not prepositions precede that particular place so that place can be replaced by e right and when o o is used for generally for quantitative to for quantitative terms right which indicate the quantity expressions of quantity right expressions of quantity say there is some number or there is some like quantity like liters kilograms etc for those you will use en right now 
again these are in detail discussed in my EL long video the link is in the description like there are a lot of more points to be discussed with EN for example like if we are replacing it uh, with our quantity numbers then that we that noun is getting replaced but that number we need to write right at the end so many more such points are there for all specifically so those will those are already discussed in my EL long video do watch it the link is in the description okay and and what else? When that when a place is preceded by the preposition the, like to return from, right? When we need to say that, then we use en. Okay. And this was your third grammar concept in your syllabus. And now we are moving to the last grammar concept which again, we are not going to discuss in very much detail, uh, which is your uh, neg neg negation, negative. Oh, the word is a bit tricky. Negation, negative. Hmm. Negation, simply, negation. Now you may get basic negation, you may get negative expressions as well. So basic negation is what? Na pa. Na pa. Subject, verb, pa, rest of the sentence. Simple. But whenever there is a tense having an auxiliary verb, then what? Subject, auxiliary verb, past participle, rest of the sentence. Okay. One small point. Whenever there is a yunde, a yunde or any partitive article, that would change to de or the apostrophe, irrespective of the fact whether it's plural or singular or feminine, whatever. It will be replaced to de or the apostrophe. And the apostrophe when? When the next word begins with a vowel. Okay. But this thing does not happen if there is at the in the sentence. Simple. Okay. If there is at the in the sentence, then this change won't take place. They will remain in their actual form. Right. And now uh, talking about the... Again, negation is done with empathy, with different, different lenses in different, different way. Again, again, those who need to watch, there are a lot of videos to watch, okay. And then you, you can have some negative expressions. For example, in your statement, there's calcus shows. Calcus shows is what? Something. Negative of it? Nothing. So, na, verb, via. Or na, auxiliary verb, via, past participle. Depends on the statement, affirmative statement, right? Then you may have calca. Calca. Na person. Right. Toujours. Always. Negative will be what? Na. Dash. Jamais. Never. Right. Then for neither nor you may have you have na ni ni. Like na verb. Ni. The object. Ni. The object. Right. So that's your negation. There are some more expressions discussed in my negative expressions video. So let's put a halt here. I hope like this a uh, quick go to a uh, rather superficial go to like we didn't go in much detail right we did from just above above things right uh, like what we say upa upa se sara humne discuss kara hai if I say it right so I hope this is going to be helpful for you for uh, a quick revision right and uh, let's put a halt here. Say to Pujudui, that's all for today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel and Future the World. And if you have any doubt or suggestion, you may write that in the comment section below. You may also like my Facebook page by the same name, Learn Future the World. See you in my next video. Thanks for watching. Au revoir. Yuge Pablo, Lang Fonse, El Amour.